Hey everybody, um, I'd love to hear about how y'all are doing. I, I miss you guys a whole lot and I can't wait to see y'all again. Uh, thanks for watching my video, my Bible lesson. I hope it's a good one for y'all today. Um, we're gonna be talking about how God cares for people who have needs. And we're gonna be uh, talking about a story about Elisha and how God met a woman's needs in his presence. Um, before we get started though, I have a joke for y'all. Uh, has something to do with something that I'm talking about later, but the joke is, how do you get an alien baby to fall asleep? You rock it. If, it, if you happen to miss the, the joke, a rocket is what aliens travel in supposedly. Um, hope that made y'all laugh. Uh, I got a few announcements today. Um, the first one is the, uh, this Sunday, or today, when y'all see this, um, it'll be a parade at four o'clock, a Memorial Day parade. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna have different stations where we'll make stuff and decorate our cars, and then we'll travel around uh, through the neighborhood and say hi to people from the church. It'll be a lot of fun. The next announcement is uh, birthdays. So um, Aubrey Mathers is turning 10 on May 21st. Congratulations, Aubrey. I hope you have an awesome birthday. And then John Millison is turning 11 on May 29th and John I hope you have a fantastic birthday buddy uh, love you guys a lot and just hope your birthdays are super awesome um, next we'll be getting into our Bible lesson uh, which I'll give you all a second to find it in your Bibles if you if you need um, our Bible lesson today will be in 2nd Kings chapter 4 verse 1 through 7 and that's 2nd Kings which is right after uh, the books of Samuel in the Old Testament. So we'll go um, here. Let me actually find what that's even after. Uh, Samuel is after, I believe it's uh, Judges. Yeah, it goes Judges, then First and Second Samuel, and then First and Second Kings. And Second Kings will, will be the book we're in today. And then Chapter Four. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then verses 1 through 7. And to uh, give a little context on this story, um, Elisha was a prophet who ministered in Israel during the time of the divided kings of uh, Israel and Judah. Um, his his uh, ministry spanned the reign of four kings, uh, Joram, Jehu, Jehoahaz, that's quite a name, and Jehoash. And he even was consulted by King Jehoshaphat, who is uh, a king of Judah. Um, so we'll start the, the story. Um, uh, verse 1 says, The wife of a man who, from the company of the prophets, cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered to the Lord, but his creditor is coming to take my boys and his slaves. Um, so... It's interesting to note that the husband who had died, he was with the company of the prophets, so he would have been, if not a prophet, one of the, like he would have known the prophets. Um, he had passed away, so this wife is now a widow. Um, during this time in Israel, you know, which few people followed God, uh, groups of people gathered to promote the worship of God, and the older prophets acting as spiritual, spiritual mentors to the young ones. That, thus, it's quite possible that Elijah was familiar with the widow and her son, so he probably knew um, the widow and even the, the husband of the widow who had died. Um, and next we'll talk about uh, the, the widow says that uh, that a creditor is coming to take my two boys and his slaves. And apparently the man who had died had left significant debt. And though it seems cruel, the law back then uh, pro provided that a creditor, creditor who was someone that would come and take what they what someone owed if they were in debt um, could force the debtors, children, and uh, could force, sorry, my bad, um, could force debtors or the children of debtors into slavery in exchange for unpaid debt. So like if someone had debt, um, the creditor could force that debtor into slavery or the children of the person who is in debt, if that makes sense. And, um, and even the widow who had just lost her husband could go into debt, like because her husband was in great debt. Um, so we'll continue the story real quick. Uh, so after the creditors coming to take 
my two boys and his slaves, Elisha, replies to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Um, she replies, your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a little oil. Uh, Elisha said, go and ask all your neighbors for empty jars and don't ask for just a few. Then go inside the door behind you and your sons. Pour the oil into all jars as each is filled. Put it into one side. Um, so, let's see. The oil um, the woman had before, or as Elijah was asking her what she needed, was supposedly not even enough to cook with. Like, uh, oil was make, used to make a lot of foods back then. It still is today. Um, it's a good ingredient that helps food not burn or not get real dry when when you're cooking it and apparently the amount of oil she had was not enough to cook which was probably like it's uh let me see i thought it said there's a she had a little flask of oil but um she probably had like this much oil which imagine eating burned food or food that's really dry after for, because of having not, not have enough oil um but um, so let's see. I'll go back to verse in the middle of verse four. Um, Elijah says, "Then go inside and shut your door behind you and your sons. Pour the oil into all the jars as each is filled, and put it onto one side." She left him afterward and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, "Bring me another one." But he replied, "There's not a jar left." And the oil had stopped flowing. So that, uh, if that didn't make sense. So they start, they got all the, the jars from their neighbors and they start pouring the, pouring the oil, which is in this little bitty flask, which there's probably this much oil left. And she poured enough oil to fill up all the jars that she's collected from her neighbors. I think that's really a really cool way that God met her needs in that time. And uh, notice how like Elisha didn't like bring her bag of gold coins or, uh, you know, move her, to somewhere where she'd be really rich and have everything she ever wanted. Um, instead, knowing that they had a tiny bit of oil, Elisha asked her and her sons to gather the jars and fill them with oil. In this way, uh, Elisha made the widow act on her faith in God, um, which I think that's really cool that uh, God worked through this way, like he provided, he cared for her needs um, when she barely had anything instead of, uh, and showed her how he is present and that he's uh, that he cares for her in that situation um, it would have been easy for the widow to refuse Elisha's instructions fearing that the neighbors would think she's crazy for asking for jars when they knew she didn't have anything to fill them with but she was faithful in following the instructions that came from God through Elisha and her faithfulness was rewarded um, let's see if there's anything else the, the last verse says she went and told the man of god and she said go sell the oil and pay your debts for your sons can live on what is left um i think that's an awesome verse uh we actually next we'll be going to the, the verse of the day which has to do do kind of with what what that story was about like god caring for the woman's needs um the verse of, of today is in deuteronomy uh, 10 verse 18 and deuteronomy i believe is the third if not the fourth book of the bible okay the fourth because numbers is right after exodus so um to find the verse of the day if you want to um go to the beginning of the bible in the new testament and go from genesis which is the first book to exodus then to numbers leviticus so it's actually the, deuteronomy is the fifth book uh leviticus numbers deuteronomy um and then look for chapter 10 which will be the big one zero uh, on on the pages, and then verse 18. So I'll find this real quick with y'all. And our verse says uh, that God defends the fatherless and the widow and the alien, giving him food and clothing. Um, and like I said earlier, we'll be talking about aliens again uh, a little later, but this alien is a little different than what we think of when we think alien. I imagine we probably think Martians or people from outer space or um, people that aren't from Earth, of course, people from space. But this, uh, the alien in this case actually means someone who doesn't have a home or isn't home and uh, can't have their needs met, someone who is far away from their home. 
and uh, the verse pretty much says, care for the alien by giving him food and, food and clothing, um, or God cares for him by giving him food and clothing, and like God, cares for those who are in need. Uh, so I think that verse is, is a really cool one, a really cool one to, to have memorized, just to know that God does care for those who have needs. Um, sometimes it's an immediate thing, like uh, the woman pouring the oil out and God giving her enough oil to pay off her debts and to last her and her sons the rest of their lives, or it may take years for God to meet people's needs. And But when that happens, um, God has a plan for all the things that happen when someone has their needs met. Like if it takes years, God has a plan for every single day out of those years that someone is having their needs met. Um, so, yeah, I like that verse a lot. So next, I have a game for y'all. I think this game is kind of fun, kind of shows us what it's like to, to be in someone else's position and um, understand other situations. So the game is to uh, try on someone else's shoes and to do a little few tasks to see what it's like to have someone else's shoes on. Um, if their shoes are too small, don't worry about like cramming your foot into somebody else's shoes or if they're too big. If they fall off, that's okay. But uh, I have four challenges I want you to try with someone else's shoes on. First, I want you to hop on one foot, uh, whether that be your left foot, right foot, you can switch. Um, you can hop on either foot to, to see how it is to to wear someone else's shoes and hop around. Uh, the next challenge is to, to run with someone else's shoes. If you're wearing shoes that are too big for you, this is probably kind of funny because you're probably clonking around and uh, probably looks really funny if you're wearing someone else's shoes that are too big. The next challenge is to do jumping jacks with someone else's shoes. And I bet that would look really funny if you're wearing shoes that are too big for you. Or if you're wearing like flip flops or high heels, just be careful if you're wearing high heels. Uh, and the last challenge is to walk the dog wearing someone else's shoes to see how it is to walk the dog. I think that'd be really funny. Um, so just to repeat that again, so uh, the challenge is to try on someone's shoes and kind of try out what it's like to be in someone else's shoes. Um, and I have one more challenge that kind of doesn't pertain to that, but it kind of pertains that God cares for those in need. Uh, but my challenge for y'all is to ask your family how you can take care of them and meet their needs. Um, I think, say your, your mother or your father or your uncles, grandparents, aunts, um, brothers and sisters would really appreciate it if you ask them how they can have their needs met and how they can be, how you can care for them. I think that's a really great question to ask that really builds a relationship and helps us meet each other's needs. Um, I'm going to wrap it up now. I got uh, just a prayer real quick and then um, I'll be done. So if y'all will fold your hands and bow your heads with me real quick. Uh, Dear Father, thanks for um, letting us get together through uh, videos and do a Bible lesson on this Sunday, Lord. Um, thank you for meeting our needs and taking care of us, Lord. Sometimes it is real quick that we have our needs met. Sometimes it takes a long time, Lord. And But we know either way that you care for us and that uh, you love us and you, you meet our needs. Sometimes we don't even know our needs. You just meet them for us without us even knowing. Um, I ask that uh, you can just help us to be encouraged to meet others' needs and um, seek out what the needs of others are, Lord, and um, just to meet those and help us to know that we're glorifying you in doing so. Um, I ask you to keep us safe and uh, keep us healthy throughout this time and just pray that you lead us and guide us where you want us to go. Um, help us to know that you love us and that you're with us and um, help life be good, Lord. Uh, thank you for everything. Thank you for your love, forgiveness, and grace. In your name I pray. Amen.